Yeah, hi Vinas, uh, this is Dr. Srikant from Team MDS Conquer. Uh, hope you're doing good and you're fine. So finally, uh, Conquer team has decided to come out with few uh, question solving sessions. Okay, so keeping in mind the upcoming INI, CET, NEET and followed by the notifications that were out related to the government jobs in the last one month. So these uh, round of videos okay, are going to be more often going to be integrated and we'll try to cover as much content as possible within the limited time duration. So this is what the target for this particular section of videos which we are going to post from now. Okay, so let's solve this question in front of you. A baby was brought into an emergency uh, with a chief complaint of difficulty in swallowing with the following investigation. Right, so what is the investigation they have given as of now? The investigation they have given is a chest x-ray. You can, you can see a chest x-ray here. So upon the examination, you can see a radio opaque object which is present here. So assuming that the baby has taken, okay, has swallowed, the coin okay so you can see a coin like a radio opaque object on the chest x-ray so the coin can either move into one part that is trachea or can jump into the second part that is the esophagus it can go anywhere so the chest x-ray is giving both the options but now if you observe the complaint that is given by the mother in the emergency ward they are clearly mentioning that the baby is feeling difficulty in swallowing Swallowing is most often related to GID. Okay, the answer here for this particular question is you can stick on to esophagus. For example, in the if the question is mentioning difficulty in breathing, same question with same x-ray, difficulty in breathing, then your answer would be option A, that is trachea. But now in this question, the, the content they have given is difficulty in swallowing. Okay, so this question, the answer is B, that is foreign object in the Esophagus, right? I hope this is very, very clear. So I'm jumping into the next question. Okay. So next question is related to the oral surgery extraction. So a 32 year old male patient underwent extraction of upper first molar on the right side and a five millimeter of perforation was created in the sinus wall. The mode of treatment for this is. Okay, so first of all, uh, this question they were talking about the oroantral communication. So oroantral communication is most commonly associated with maxillary first, maxillary upper maxillary first molar, maxillary first molar. Okay, that's one of the important points that you have to make a note. So oroantral communication, uh, the treatment plan varies with the size of the perforation what is being created. And of course, we know the difference that is acute uh, oroantral communication or chronic oroantral communication. We have two things which we have discussed so many times. But now, whether to go with a surgical option, whether to go with a regular follow-up, okay, so because you have all the options here, you can check the options. A is a surgical interventions, B is uh, suturing the area and follow-up, C is giving the antibiotic dressing and allows the secondary healing and D is none of the treatment. So it just depends upon one keyword that is given in the question that is the size of the perforation okay here in this question the size of the perforation whatever they have given is in and around five millimeters okay right so they have given five millimeters as the size of the perforation so now we are jumping into the uh, contents okay so for example if it is one to two millimeters perforation regularly doesn't require any treatment because it heals regularly okay so that doesn't require any treatment but in this question they have mentioned it as five millimeters the second one is two to four millimeters perforation where the follow-up has to be done one to two weeks and advice to avoid strain, straining those areas like sneezing the, those areas or probing those areas okay uh, all those areas like it should be protected whenever the lesion is six millimeters or larger six millimeters or larger then you have to consider the surgical intervention so there are few textbooks mentioning it as six few textbooks mentioning it as four so thinking from the paper setter point of view Okay, so he's expecting a lesion larger than 5 millimeters, assuming that he has to go for surgical intervention. So for this question, the answer, I want to go with option A. Okay, so then jumping into the next question. Okay, so you have one more question. So this is again, uh, uh, this, this is a type of question that is given in uh, the neat examination. Uh, let's check the question. A 52 year old woman with a controlled hypertension with a controlled hypertension 
came to the dental OPD to undergo a dental extraction procedure. After the extraction, she got down from the chair and immediately falls down on the floor. The diagnosis of this particular case is. So you have options like postural hypotension. Second one, you have option like syncope. Third one, you have option like hypoglycemia. Fourth one, you have option like stroke. Okay. So coming to hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia regularly occurs in diabetic patients. Okay. Hypo, hypoglycemic shock regularly occurs in diabetic patients. So whenever you have a background history of uh, diabetic patients, so because the most common cause of hypoglycemia in diabetic patient according to your Malmed uh, is skipping, skipping of breakfast. breakfast or skip, skipping of meal that is the most common cause and second most common for occurrence of hypoglycemia is insulin you take insulin okay all doses of insulin or insulin okay that is the second mode of uh, hypoglycemia but basically it is the skipping of the breakfast so they're going to give a history of skipping of the breakfast uh, or the patient with a background history of diabetic then you can consider it as an hypoglycemic shock okay like and coming to vasovagal syncope, uh, vasovagal syncope is a different entry that is a vas vasovagal syncope is an option P that can also be considered, that can also be considered in this particular uh, question. Okay, so my suggestion is, so you can eliminate option D, option C, but you can stick on to either A or P. Okay, so but if you go deep into this question, it's clearly mentioned that the patient is having controlled hypo hypertension. Okay, he's having a controlled hypertension and because of the uses of the drugs and everything so they are clearly mentioning uh, the patient got down from the chair so they are clearly mentioning the position position of the patient so it is better uh, from my point of view it is better to go with option a compared to that of the option b that is postural hypertension okay so a is a better option even b is also b can also be considered but a is a better option when compared to that of the b Right. I hope you are clear with all the contents. Okay. So we'll be coming up short with one more video. Uh, stay tuned towards the updates on the YouTube. Thank you. Signing off Dr. Srikanth from Team MBS Corporate. Bye.